you are very ugly I'm afraid just like me don't get me wrong I have no inflated ideas about my own physical appearance but you're ugly and yes evolution explains very well why you are like that you see your creationist buddies would want you to believe that something like ugliness is something that evolution couldn't possibly explain. It is a good argument, they think, against evolution. I've seen it presented a number of times. But if life is evolving, how come I'm bald? How come you're ugly? How come there are still retarded people around? How come there are still bacteria? How come not everybody can fly like a bird? How come we're not all angels? So let's look at how creationism misrepresents evolution. Let's look at that misrepresentation and let's then one by one demolish that edifice by strut by strut until it comes tumbling down as the misconstruction that it is. And let me replace it with a much better picture of how evolution is meant to work. And a picture that will then explain to you why you are as ugly as you are. Sorry. But you are. So let's have a look at how creationism, first of all, misrepresents evolution. You see, according to what the creationist would want you to believe, evolution is meant to be some sort of an inexorable march towards a perfection. I suppose, in the creationist mind, we humans either have already reached this, this pinnacle of perfection, or we are on the way to becoming what? Angels or something, right? And then, of course, the arguments that they make do actually make quite a bit of sense. For example, the chances of every step being in place the way it, it was are astronomical. The chances against it are astronomical. So, to believe that it all came about by chance is ridiculous. It certainly is. Except, of course, that's not what evolution is, and that's not how evolution works, is it? So let's look at this picture again. Let's look at a picture that creationists would paint of evolution. Something along the lines of having this beautiful goal in mind. Angels say, we want to become angels these perfect beings that are close to God or something of that nature. So, what happens? Well, it started by a single cell. It just, poof, magically came into being. And then, of course, for some strange reason, completely unexplained, they all just grouped together into clumps of cells. And those clumps of cells, for again no good reason, changed into fish. And then those fish, for no good reason again, one day just decided to crawl out of the water and grow arms and legs, or at least limbs. And then those animals that were crawling around on four limbs all the time, one day just decided to stand up. And then one fine day they decided to grow a really big brain and become humans. And then one day, I guess, we'll just sprout wings. Yeah, if you look at evolution like that, as some sort of march towards a predefined goal, then it makes no sense at all. It couldn't possibly make sense. It couldn't possibly be true. So a creationist who argues against that picture is actually arguing a good cause, except they're arguing against straw men. Because no evolutionist, as they want to call us, actually believes that that is how it works. So I've painted the picture that the creationists would like to pay. paint. The picture that the creationists would like to paint about evolution. And now I'm going to replace everything they've done, slowly but steadily, over the course of a number of videos, with better images. Images that make a lot more sense, and that will hopefully, eventually, give you a better understanding of what happens during evolution. And also will help you understand why you are ugly. Okay, so let's have a look. First of all, let's have a look at this inexorable march towards perfection. 
We're going to leave the perfection in place, even though it's wrong, but that is another day's work. And we're going to leave the inexorable march in place. Well, the first thing we have to replace is this nonsense about kind of random additions. They are not random additions. They never are, and they have never have been. The changes that take place during evolution are always based on what is already there. Let's look at that picture again. Single-celled organisms, multi-celled organisms, fish, by uh, quadrupedal animals that uh, are outside the water, uh, animals that walk on their hind legs, and finally humans with large brains. And let's now again look at how these things follow on from one another, and how it makes a lot more sense if you know how they follow on from one another. First of all, the multicelled organisms went through a large number of stages before they even became fish. During those stages, a number of things happened. One ex important thing is that one line of animals developed a, um, a symmetry, a bilateral sy symmetry, which means that those animals had a front and a back that were not identical, they were not symmetrical. They had a top and a bottom that were not identical, and they were not symmetrical. But they had a left and a right side that looked symmetrical, that could be swapped in a mirror and would make the animal still look pretty much the same. So that's the first thing that happened. Another line of animals that had this bilateral symmetry, and it could have been the other way around, a little bit fuzzy on those details, but they developed this thing called a cord across their length, uh, the length of their bodies. Along this cord, a lot of things happened. For example, the digestive tract was um, directed along this cord. But also, in later animals, it turned into a cord, into a conduct for nerve signals when they developed brains. And what happened is, what we can see now in all chordates, animals with backbones, is that that is, what they've, that, that that is what it has changed into a backbone. And that's when we slowly evolved towards the body plan that fish, for example, still share with us. A body plan that involves a backbone along which nerve signals are transported. So that is how the changes are cumulative. They don't just happen by chance. They are changes that move forward from what is already there. The cord changed into a backbone. The bilateral symmetry allowed for the, the, for the evolution of a body plan that allowed for the backbone to be in place. Similarly, for fish, for when the animals came out of the water, the, arm, the, the limbs that those animals evolved didn't just sprout out of the body like nothing. They were based on what was already there, the fins that those fish-like ancestors of theirs already had, and that is what they're based on. Similarly, the legs and the arms of the uh, bipedal forms are based on the four limbs of what went before. So our arms have the same structure as the limbs of, say, a cat. And if you look at the cat, a cat's limbs, and you dissect a cat's limbs, a cat's forepaws, you'll find the same two bones in the first bit, the same one bone in the last bit, you even find the same five digits. Except, of course, in a cat they haven't evolved into the handy fingers we've got. But they're the same digits, the same bone structures. And that is why evolution has moved forward. It has moved forward from what was already there. So every step is like climbing a ladder. It's like standing on one step and taking one step up. It's not a leap into the unknown. It's not a random change as such. That is the first thing I want you to understand. And in my following video, I'm going to look at something else completely. I'm going to look at this idea of perfection.